Aloha, man. Hey, it'd be cool if you could drop me at my friend's pad. Any chance of a ride? If you watched my last review, you'll know that yes, I am a huge racing fan. But even I realize that the genre can become a bit stale, unforgiving, sterile at times. Whether it's the harsh rules and regulations of circuit racing, where even a single mistake can mean the end of the race, to the unforgiving pressure of street racing, where a single mistake can mean the end of your ride. And it was into this environment that some crazy French developers went to Atari and said, Hey, let's go to Hawaii! This is Test Drive Unlimited. And it was such a simple idea, too. Considering my last review was by Eden Games as well, I figure I might as well do what made them famous in the first place. Test Drive Unlimited launched in late 2006, following up the initial wave of Xbox 360 launch titles. It was a good time for it, too. The first few speed bumps of the Xbox 360's launch had been ironed out, online console multiplayer was going mainstream, widescreen HDTV was becoming the standard, and the PlayStation 3 was still months away. Open world racing was nothing new, but setting one somewhere as beautiful as Hawaii was. Oahu, actually, Third Island, and over a thousand virtual miles to explore. Seriously, this map is huge. A full perimeter run in even the best cars will take at least 45 minutes. Famous landmarks are a bit hit or miss, but some cool ones are present. The Aloha Tower, Honolulu Harbor, Iolani Palace, Diamond Head, Valley of the Temples, even the terrain itself transitions from the lush forested eastern half to the more arid mountains of the west. It's more representation than recreation, but it is just a beautiful game to look at. And it's all available from the very outset. After a brief but clever selection of your avatar from an airport terminal, it's off to the island for your racing adventure. And immediately you're introduced to the unique presentation of Test Drive Unlimited. Rather than just clicking through boring old menus, the game tries to paint everything through a personal or lifestyle lens. If you want to find clothes, cars, or houses, you'll have to explore the map and find the different outlets and dealerships that sell them. So if you want to buy a new house or need more garage space for cars, just head to the nearest realtor and see what's available. You can take a virtual tour of the properties, and while you may have to start with a house or apartment with only a basic four-car garage, by the end game, you'll be buying mountain villas with 8 to 10 car capacity. And what better to fill those garages than some of the coolest cars your 2006 self could dream of? Exotic supercars are here, obviously, but you'll also have beautiful and classy Grand Tourers, American Muscle, classic and modern, luxury sedans, concept cars, hard tops, soft tops, and even motorcycles. Seriously. Over 125 rides are available out of the box with a few DLC packs thrown in for good measure. And lucky me, I still have them. Just like with real estate, car buying is more personal and unique in Test Drive Unlimited. When you're browsing the dealership for your newest ride, you can usually choose unique rims and interiors for most cars. And, ladies and gentlemen, for the first time in the history of the Test Drive intellectual property, you are actually able to test drive cars. See what it's like before you commit. 
Modern rides are always available, but older classics actually rotate through availability. So if you see something you want, but it's not available, you can put in a reservation and the game will notify you when it's available automatically. You can upgrade cars if an event is too difficult and a few even allow for full conversion kits. If you find an event that requires a car that you either can't afford or don't want to have as part of your collection, you can even rent cars and use them for those events. Finally, concept cars are rewarded for completing each of the different race types in the game. And speaking of which, while style may define the housekeeping, variety rules the races. Sure, you have your standard competitive races with point-to-point, -point, laps, eliminators, multi-class, but the game offers you so much more to choose from. Speed-type competitions have you trying to reach a target speed or average speed, often in difficult circumstances. A top speed challenge may have you trying to reach a target speed on a highway filled with traffic, while speed camera races require you to meet a target average. In both of these race types, you don't need to stick to the obvious route. In fact, you might only be able to nail the target by getting creative. Time trials are present and give you the chance to see some beauty spots or mountain climbs while trying to avoid penalty time. Courier missions come in two flavors, either trying to get a <laughs> package from point A to point B with no need for cleanliness, only speed. I'm not going to comment on what they're carrying, probably imposter fragrances, but car deliveries are even better. You'll be delivering the actual car to a destination, which is actually kind of brilliant since they give early players a chance to see some of the top end cars in the game. But I will say that if you trust me with your McLaren F1, well then you deserve what's going to happen. My favorite, though, are the hitchhikers. There are a ton of tourists, surfer dudes, top models, and they all need a ride throughout the map. While they only pay out in clothing tokens, I'm not sure why, but I get the biggest kick out of these. I mean, they don't mind if you go blasting down the wrong side of the highway at 200 miles an hour, just as long as the ride is smooth. And in return, you'll get access to dress up your avatar as some real-world branded clothes, which is a nice touch. It's optional, but it gives you the chance to accessorize and customize your avatar to match the whole lifestyle element of the game. Perfect. There. All of this variety, both racing and otherwise, really helps to give Test Drive Unlimited its own appeal. You can choose any event in any order, and if something's too difficult, there's always plenty other events to take part in, and the game will open more up as you progress. Turning to graphics, I have to say this was a nice, lush-looking game, but it has aged a bit. The frame rate is a bit shaky, and in fact, you'll never really see a smooth frame rate, but you can jump from one part of the island to another at any time very quickly. One thing to note, though, is that the car models can be a bit uneven. Audio gets the job done. Top exotics and muscle cars sound nice, but everything else is pretty much background noise. Like any good open-world automotive games, you have several channels of music to listen to, although these mostly consist of second-string or off-label compilations. Obviously, I'm not playing anything because of potential copyright issues, but even so, you'd probably want to load up your own playlist. This is a long game, so even if the tracks were good, you'd be hearing plenty of repeats. Control-wise, the game is a bit basic, but it's fine. The real issues are the physics, where the game is a bit clunky. It's not that the game is difficult or difficult to drive, it's just, I think, what it is is that there's no real suspension modeling in the game. So anytime you crash into traffic or battle with police or even just hit some rough ground, the car sort of crashes against everything. Online play was actually a really interesting concept. Atari tried really hard to market this as a massively open online racing game. And there was fun to be had in race matchups, clubs, or just group driving. But I don't think it ever really caught the magic of a save Forza Horizon simply because it was so early. Halo and Gears of War and Call of Duty would still need some time to make online gaming the behemoth it became. But credit to Eden for trying to make an open world online racing genre. For those wondering, the single player game is completely playable even though the online servers have been turned off. But the PC version has a multiplayer and mod community that's actually still active. All the tech talk in the world, though, isn't really what Test Drive Unlimited is about. It's about freedom and beauty and bringing that back to racing. 
take a tropical location, hot cars, and let the players run loose without the usual rigid campaign structures or punishments. It still has plenty of challenges and plenty of things to unlock, but it's something you can enjoy playing. This was a great way to kick off the seventh generation in earnest, who was definitely one of my early favorites, and it may have helped pave the way for future open world racing games like the Forza Horizon series. As before, as always, thank you so much for watching. Please would you be my next subscriber, feel free to leave comments, and as always, be sure to keep going. You are worth it.